I'm still teaching on the new man, which is basically the whole message of the New Testament. New creation, new covenant. Amen? Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature or a new creation. One translation says a new species of being that never existed before. Um, he has made us able ministers of the New Testament, ministers of reconciliation. All of the things that God has made new inside of us are of God. Old things are passed away, all things have become new, and all things are of God. Now, if Christians just understood that one simple scripture, we would not be digging in our past, we would not be going into our ancestry and doing all of that stuff, of which Jesus never did, of which Paul never did, of which you won't find in the entire New Testament or any of the Gospels, it would save you a lot of time and you'd be free the way you're supposed to be free. If you just understood that one simple scripture, the new man, the new creation, if you don't understand what I'm saying, the day that you were born again, that person didn't exist anymore. Now you're a brand new creature in Christ Jesus. God didn't restore you like you restored an old couch. There's a, he put a new couch in there. You understand it? New furniture, new you, new person, new man, new creation. Now, your, your, your mind, that's your spirit man. Now your mind, will, and emotions, your mind needs to be renewed. But see, the moment that you're born again, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, you have the mind of Christ. That, your spirit has a mind, has a thinking mind. But so does your soul, and your soul is the natural mind. And so that's where the battle is. The battle is in the mind. And so the whole idea, Paul said this, he says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, that you present your body a living sacrifice, only acceptable in him, which is your reasonable service. Don't be conformed to this world, be transformed, be metamorphosized, be changed from the inside out oh, by the renewing of your mind. Jesus on the inside, which is perfectly perfect, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14, is Existing here comes out through our soul, through our mind, will, and emotions, and out here so the world can see Jesus. See? Uh, the world wants to see Jesus. They're tired of hearing about him. Well, we're in. Yeah. Amen. What does Jesus look like? Well, he looks like John. When John goes and ministers the love and power of God to people, or preaches the gospel, or shares with people of what they don't what they don't know. He looks like Kathy. When Kathy goes and ministers the power of God to, to someone, see, it's, it, we're the, the body of Christ. And our function is to function exactly like Jesus. That's what the whole purpose of the new creation is. You don't have any less spiritual equipment than Jesus had when he walked this earth. How could you if you had him in fullness? Amen. Jesus said in John 1.16, he said, and of his fullness, of his completeness, do you have? And listen, and that by grace, for grace. Amen? Amen? See, it's all by grace. Yeah. It's all a gift. It's all free. Amen. Freely received, freely give it away. Yeah. Amen? If you have to earn it, you can't freely give it away. Right. So just receive it freely. No, stop trying to earn what Jesus paid for with his shed blood and broken body and freely, Romans 8, 32, That's gave right. to us. Amen? That's right. Amen? See, you're free. Say, I'm free. Free, free from what? Free from sickness, poverty, death, Amen. free from sin, free from the devil, free from, you know, what you used to be. Yes. Amen. Thank free you. to live, to walk, to be who you are in Christ, which is one with him, 1 Corinthians 6, 17. Now, did I tell you to turn to Colossians chapter 2? Look at verse 8. It says, beware, lest anyone, again, I'm re re reading from the New King James Version of the Bible this morning. It says, beware, lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the traditions of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. Well, we there's the church of Jesus Christ right there. Amen. Nobody's bad. God's not mad at anybody. But, you know, we have filtered in all of the churches become more like man with psychology and philosophies. And now we're trying to figure out every single little detail. Can I say this to your friends? The day you gave your life to Jesus Christ, that, that's the end of you. That's the, the end of you trying to figure this thing out. Amen. Amen. God has it all figured out. All right. The only thing I have to do is understand this word, look at this word, and just do what it says. Amen. Amen. See, I know exactly what God's going to do. I may not know how he's going to do it. I don't need to know how he's going to do it. He's going to do what he said in his word. Amen. If you're sick, he's going to heal you. 
Amen? Actually, he's already provided that for you. Amen? If you need provision, God's going to provide for you. See? You don't just have healing. You have the healer. You don't just have provision. You have the provider. You don't just need have protection. You have the protector living inside of you. 24-7. And that's what you are. That's what you walk in all the time. Amen? And see, when you think like that, now your mind is lined up with the New Testament. It's lined up with Jesus Christ. And now you lack nothing. You're deficient of nothing. You're always ready all the time to be used of God, to flow in the power of God, the love of God, the ministry of reconciliation, anywhere, any place, any time, just like Jesus. Amen? Basically, he goes with you wherever you go. So Colossians chapter 2, verse 9, it says, But for in him dwells all the fullness of of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him who is the head of principality and power. Anybody have an Amplified Bible here today? All right, I'm going to read this to you from the Amplified. It says, For in him the whole fullness, this is verse 9, the whole fullness of deity, the Godhead, continues to dwell in bodily form, giving complete expression of the divine nature. That's exciting. But look at verse 10. And you are complete in him. Now that word complete is the same word used in John chapter 1 verse 16 saying of his fullness have we all received and you are complete in him made full and have come to the fullness of life in Christ you too are filled with the Godhead Father Son and Holy Spirit and reach full spiritual stature well you know I'm just human and you know I'm trying to get there Stop trying to get there and realize that you're already there. Yes. Amen. May I say this to your friends and kindness? You don't need a breakthrough. You broke through the day you got saved. You're through. Amen? Now just receive that, believe that, and just walk in it. Because it's so. Amen? That would be a hard thing, except it's already so. Jesus made it so. Okay. In him you were also circumcised with circumcision made without hands by putting off of the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. That, that's a heavy right there if you get that. See, the Old Covenant Jews, the circumcision was an outward expression of something that they had not yet experienced on the inside. And so in Romans, I think it's the second chapter, thereabouts, uh, maybe the third chapter, I don't know, I'll, we'll take time to turn there, but uh, Paul said, who's the real Jews? He says, not those that are circumcised in flesh, he says, those, those that are circumcised in spirit, those people that are truly born again. Amen? Yeah. Not talking, see, I'm, I'm going to get in trouble with this, <laughs> but you know, the word Jew, Jewish, again, uh, initially came from Judah when the divided kingdom was in the Old Testament, and then it became a word used to all of the nation of Israel. So a person from Israel was called a Jewish person. But Paul uh, relates this to the people of God in the New Testament. And so he says, who's the real Jew? It's not the one that's been circumcised in the flesh, but the one that's been circumcised in heart. Now, someone said this to me when I was teaching this down in, uh, in Atlanta, in Georgia down there. And they said, so we're all Jews. I said, no, we're all Christians. There is no Jews anymore, as far as, you know, once you come into Christ, understand what I'm saying. There's neither Jew nor Gentile. There's neither bond nor free. There's, you're saved or unsaved, one or the other. See, God's not looking at special races of people. He's not dealing with people that way. He's dealing with people by the Spirit of God, to their spirit, getting them born again. Amen. So God's not saying, well, you're, you're from this safe, certain uh, nation, so you, you have a privilege, and, and, but you don't because, you know, your, your skin's not the right color, and you're from an impoverished nation, and so, you know, we'll just let a million of you die. That's, that's not God. I said that's not God. That's right. He's not playing favorites over any nation. We are in the New Testament. We are in a dispensation of grace. We are in the dispensation of the church. The church, according to Hebrews chapter 12, is Zion. Amen? And God is doing everything through his body, through the church. Now, there, there is a time, I believe, when, you know, a remnant, you know, Romans chapter 9, Romans chapter 11, there's a remnant of Israel that God will pick up. And, again, the, all the timing of that, I'm not really too real clear on that. I'll leave that to the experts. But even in that, all of those people still need to get born again. Every single individual per person still needs to be born again. Amen? Yes. It's not different for, for Jewish people or or Italian people. 
I, I, I bit this off, I might as well go all the way with it. You know, Messianic Jew. Well, why don't we say Messianic Italians? Why don't we say Messianic Asian people? No, you're, you're either saying...